Hi, I'm going to show you how to use BS2 on the UpMax computer clusters using uh, Rackham. Um, so already here I have like the graphical login of Rackham. So this is how Rackham looks like with the GUI environment, like the thin link environment as they say it. And we're going to run and use Beast 2 there. So Beast 2 is a tool for Bayesian value genetic analysis. So to use Beast 2, we're going to have to load the Beast 2 module. We'll be running Beauty to set up the parameters. We're going to run Beast 2. And after that, we're going to view the trees it creates. It looks something like, something like this. And we're going to run Tracer to see how, how good those trees are. I'm going to show you all these steps. First things first, because we're going to do some heavy calculations. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start an interactive node. Um, but you can use scripts for the same thing as well, like as batch script or bash scripts. So although I'm on the graphical environment of Rackham, um, I'm, I'm going to start an interactive node. And I, I, I have some like a some script I prepared I always use uh, to start an interactive node and I just copy paste this line <laughs> that is how you start an interactive node using the command interactive on dash capital A your account number dash M snowy this is for me I use snowy but uh, you probably can omit this the number of cores one core a number of processes 16 um, it's exclusive to me you can omit that too and I'll be using maximum for one day. So I'm going to run that code, so I'm going to paste it. Oh, that's a copy and paste there. And now it starts looking for an interactive node. It, that means it starts looking for a compute node where you usually run your calculations on, but then it's for me. Uh, and then I don't need to bother. Uh, and then I'm fine with doing super hard calculations because no one is bothered by it. Would I not start an interactive node, I would be on the login node. And that's a shared node, so people are using it too. So if I do hard stuff there, like hard calculations there, then people will get annoyed. Uh, you'll get an email and those kind of things. You should not do hard stuff on the login node. So now I'm looking for an interactive node. And this always takes a bit of time. Here we see pending job allocation. So it's now looking for a compute node that I can use. So um, that always takes a bit of time. And after that, we're going to do the steps by hand. So we're going to load the, the BS2 module. And you also use a module called BioInfo Tools. We're going to run Beauty. And for that, um, we are going to also download an alignment. We need a DNA alignment or and amino acid alignment, whatever, but it needs to be aligned. Uh, and because Beauty is also a graphical tool, you need to have X forwarding enabled. This means that it can show graphics. So I don't use SSH to log in directly. I've used the, the, the thin link application. I use the remote desktop environment, as it's called. So this thing has graphics on its own. You can see like there's a folder here, and you can see there's a menu here. So this has graphics. If you use SSH from the command line, you need, do need to use SSH-X. Uh, you, can, you can see this there. So with Beauty, I will I will download the an alignment. I, I have an alignment at the ready, and I create a, a default BS2 file. Then I'm going to run it directly. And because I'm on an interactive node, I can run things directly. So I will use Beast, which is the name of the program Beast 2. But th th they kept this the same name as Beast, the regular Beast. Beast and Beast 2 are completely different things, although they do similar things. Um, but then I'm gonna so I'm gonna run my analysis here. Uh, you can put it in the script here. If you're not on an interactive node, you can use as batch. And then when it's running, we can we're gonna look at the trees and we're gonna uh, run tracer. Uh, also, tracer needs to be installed. It's not installed in the module yet. I'm just gonna follow the steps there too. All right. And the reason I have been talking is because well, I needed to get this interactive node. So I'm on an interactive node now. So that's great. I'm gonna load 
beast to now. Let's see if that works. That doesn't work, of course. Yeah, so copy pasting is a bit clumsier because, well, uh, uh, there. There, so now it's on the clipboard. This is way, way slower than just than just me, me typing it. All right, so I load the module. Bioinfo tools is, a, is the module you usually load before any biology tools and bees too. Sure. So now we're going to run beauty and I can already run it, but I do need an alignment. So I've prepared one. Um, it's at this URL. Um, uh, this is how it looks like. Oh, I can just copy paste this thing, but instead I'll just download. I'll download this file uh, on Rackham. So I need to put it, the URL in the clipboard here. Let's do it. This is where it is. We're already going to put we get there. That's how you download a file. Going to paste the thing. And now we have a file called antusacosub.fast. It's a faster file. Now I can just show it to you. This is how it looks like it's the same thing. And that's one. And you see it's very small, like it has only one, two, three, four, five taxa and short DNA sequences. So that will be great. So let's use that. Uh, so I'm going to run Beauty on that alignment. So Beauty is a graphical tool. So again, if you use SSH, you need to have X forwarding enabled. That's just using a dash capital X. If you use the graphical uh, remote desktop like I do, you don't need to do this stuff. It's, it's done for you. Yeah, here we have Beauty. And we're going to, in the file, we're going to import our alignment first. And uh, there it is at the top. And it is uh, the uh, nucleotide alignment. So we're going to click on that. And now it has loaded our alignment. So we can set up all the things like the site model, the clock model, some priors, the clay ages, whatever those are that's irrelevant. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set the MCMC chain length to very short, else it would be a longer video. Let's put it to 10,000. And we're going to store it every, let's let's do 100 iterations. We have, have some data. Um, this will be a crappy run, but it's not about having a good run, uh, but about doing a run. All right, so in a real life application, your chain length will be at least 1 million uh, commonly. Um, or I'm going to save this file. What it, so what is it going to do? Uh, let's call it um, beast to demo. So it has now saved this setup, this model, with the alignment as a .xml file. So I'm going to save it. For some reason I'm not allowed to save it. There, it's saved. And now I'm going to close it. And now beast2demo.xml exists. So this is great. So we've created an XML file called beast2demo and we're going to run beast2 with it. So we're going to call beast and instead of beast2 setup, I'm going to use beast2demo. Oh, I don't want to go down. So I am here beast2demo.xml. And now it will run beast. So it will create a posterior in both trees and parameter estimates. So now I have run beast too. Next step is to use density tree for the file names for the on the trees. So it has created about a hundred posterior trees, I think. I guess it, it's a, I use demos. So density tree that file name. And now it will show the uh, tree distribution. And because I can make this a bit smaller so we can see everything. Yeah, so it created all these trees. So we, of course, the run was not very good. So we would not expect to to. Uh, to find that it's a very clear pattern, like it does seem that these two texts are always in the same thing, but it can be just initialization. Like we, we're still at burn-in phase, and uh, so this is this is nonsense. But at least you see this is how you get the tree also when it's the data is correct. 
All right, so we view the trees. Next step is to use tracer to look at the at the effect of sample sizes. Uh, it looks like this, um, and for that I'm going to use the documentation too. And we're gonna so tracer is the tool, and it has three steps to use. It's on the Upmax module. Instead, I'm going to download, extract, and run it uh, on Rackham directly. And this is how you do it from the command line. So I just copy paste that there to the clipboard of the thing. There, close it now, I paste it here. There, it's a compressed file, so I have to uncompress it. So I'm gonna copy paste this to the clipboard. There, and now I can paste it there. So now it's uncompressed, and now we're gonna run it. I, I use the clipboard just to make sure, just to show that I really f just copy paste the documentation, although it's super clumsy. Paste there. So now it's running tracer, and we're gonna use it on the same data, which is called beast two underscore demo. And we're going to see the effect of sample size will be super low and, and all those things. Import trace file, that seems like the way to go. Piece2demo.log, that seems like what we've done. And here we see our values. And we see that the traces have, the ESS is what you're looking for, have an effective sample size of 10. Uh, well, that's, uh, that's at least 10 instead of lower. Um, but Th this should be at least 200. Well, you can analyze all these traces. Like for example, you can see see this. That's a, so, but this is more like what tracer does. It shows you, for example, the values in time. Um, when it runs through the MCMC chain, um, and you can correlate them um, if they are like, if, if if they are correlated, for example, if you want that. Uh, but that's about tracer. Like I've shown you how to run tracer, not how to use tracer. All right, so back to Beast 2 documentation, I have now ran Tracer. So that means I've just showed you how to run, how to use Beast 2 on the Upmax computer cluster, where we started a remote desktop environment or the Thinlink client, but you could also use SSH directly. We've loaded the modules, we ran Beauty to create the parameter files, then we use Beast2 to run that file, that setup, that to run that model. Then we use Density tree to view the trees. And then we've installed and run Tracer to see how well our run went and maybe we should extend it. Alright, that concludes this video. I wish you a very good day. Bye!